Welcome back, folks. Today I wanted to talk about work and energy, uh, two terms that sort of often get uh, de defined in terms of each other. We sometimes say that work is a transfer of energy and that energy is the capacity to do work. So, uh, you know, how do we define these two things if we don't know what either of them means? Uh, well, I think one way to, to look at this is in terms of this analogy with money, where energy is going to be like the money and work is going to be like some kind of a transaction we can have that involves the exchange of money. So as an example here, if this is me and I've got, say, $15 and I were to uh, make exchange money with you and you've got, say, $20, if I were to give you $5, we each experience this change in the amount of money that we have, right? So if I give you $5, I end up with just $10, and you end up then with $5 more, $25. All right, now by the same token, if I had, say, 15 joules of energy, so that's like my money, and you have 20 joules of energy, and then I did work on you in the amount of five joules, I would end up with less energy and you would end up with more energy by an amount of five, five joules this, this time instead of five dollars. So I would have five joules less, I'd be down to 10 joules. You'd have five joules more, you'd be up to 25 joules. Now that energy, just like money, can take on different forms. We have different kinds of currency. Uh, so in the US, we have the US dollar. Uh, there are different kinds of currency around the world, and of course you can own things that have value as well. So there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to have wealth. You know, maybe you have a, a really great education, that's one form of wealth that probably came at the expense of a fair amount of money. Maybe you have a really big house or a big car, uh, or you know, a small house or a small car, those things still have value as well. Uh, and in order to achieve those things or to, to uh, acquire those things, there was some kind of a transaction that took place. So you may have uh, energy in a number of different, for different forms, just like you may have wealth in a number of different forms. Uh, but the way that we, we acquire those things is about the same all around. There's some kind of a transaction where uh, you know the amount that I have and the amount that somebody else has, either money or uh, energy, uh, is going to be changing. Now, energy, just like wealth, is not limited to uh, something that a single object can possess. We can have groups of objects or systems of objects possessing energy, just like we could have groups of people or corporations uh, possessing wealth. And by the same token, uh, the exchange of wealth, really, we only look at from outside the system to into the system or into the system outside the system. So let me, let me show you what, what I mean. If I uh, say this system represents uh, me and my wife. Okay, so we've got both of us in here and uh, you know maybe times are a little tough and you know we don't have uh, quite as much money as we want so I come up with this great idea and I say to my wife, honey I have this brilliant idea, I'll just get a second job. So I can, you know, do a little work around the house and then you can pay me, you know, like $10 an hour to work around the house. And that's how we'll solve our money problems, right? Because after, after I'm done working, you can, you know, I'll do my hour of work and you can give me $10 and then we'll have $10 more. So my wife gives me $10 and as a result, Obviously, we still have the same amount of money between us because it's only moved from one part of our system to the other. My wife and I have a joint bank account, so there's no point in her paying me or me paying her because it goes right to the same account. The only time that we as a unit, as a system, uh, gain money is if money comes from outside of that system. So my employer or her employer would be outside of this system and giving money into the system at, you know, in exchange for work. So by the same token, the energy in our system is not going to change when one object in our system does work on another object in our system, but only when we have some object outside of our system doing work on our system. Now we can write that as an equation. We can say that the amount of work done on some system is equal to the change in energy 
for that system. So remember, work is like the transaction amount. Delta just means the change in something, and here we're talking about energy. So the work done on our system by outside influences, by outside forces, when we're talking about work, is equal to how much our the energy for that same system changes. Now, it can't be work from inside the system, so it can't be one object within the system doing work on another object in the system. That might change the energy type. It might change it from one part of our system to another, but the amount within the system as a whole does not change as a result of that. Work is a transaction. Energy is the money with which we're, we're transacting. Uh, work is not the only way that energy can be exchanged or that we can you know, have that transaction take place. It is the only way that we talk about in AP Physics 1. AP Physics 2 has heat, and uh, to a lesser degree, we talk about light uh, as being a way to, to exchange energy as well. But for AP Physics 1, really, it's just work. It's applying a force over some distance to cause a change in the energy of a system. Since work has to be done by some outside force, uh, choosing our system and what objects to include and what objects to not include, to exclude, uh, will determine what we consider outside forces and uh, internal forces, and as a result determines uh, the value for work done on the system. So here, if we imagine somebody pushing a box, we all love pushing boxes, uh, we'll say this person starts with the box at rest, the person's at rest initially, and then sometime later we've got this person pushing the box and it's going really fast now. We have some large velocity over in this direction. Clearly we have uh, more energy in this state than we do here, right? Everything here is uh, at rest, and here we have lots and lots of motion, so that, uh, that goes with kinetic energy, large amounts of kinetic energy when we have big objects moving fast. So where did that kinetic energy come from? Or where is the work that's taking place here? Well, that depends on how we define our system. So if we say that our system is only going to include the box, if we look at forces from objects other than the box acting on the box, and uh, here we have, well, the person pushing on the box, they're applying a force, so they're doing work on the box. They're applying a force in the same direction the box moves, so we can even say they're doing positive work on the box. There'd also probably be friction here, and so friction on this box would be trying to slow the box down or trying to prevent the sliding of the box surface along the floor surface. So friction would be pointing in that direction on the box, meaning opposite the direction of motion. Friction would be doing negative work on the box. Now, that box has energy going into that system and energy coming out of that system. The person is doing work on the box, positive work, that's energy entering the box system. Friction is doing negative work, though, and that's energy leaving the box system. Here we end up with our box moving faster. It has more energy than it started with, so we know that we must be putting in more energy than we have coming out of that system. We end up with more energy, we have to have more going in than we do coming out. So whatever work the person is doing on the box must be larger than the amount of work that the frictional force from the ground is doing on the box. Now, if we changed our system, and instead of this purple circle for our system, if we included the person and the box, we've got a, a little bit different picture here. We do have still friction doing work on the system but in sort of a complicated way now. So we have the person included in the system now. The person can't do work on the system because they're part of the system. So that's me and my wife trying to pay each other to increase our overall wealth. That doesn't work. So the person can't increase the energy of the system by doing work on the system. It's a part of the system. They're a part of the system. Uh, so what we, we have here instead is only things that are outside of the system are doing work on our system. So outside of the system, we have the ground in this picture. The ground provides a frictional force, which is, is tricky here. The frictional force does two things to this system. There's a frictional force between the box and the floor, and there's a frictional force between the person's feet and the floor. Now, friction is what lets this person move forward. Right? They are pushing off the ground, and as they push off the ground, they are able to move forward then. The frictional force that they, their feet experience is what keeps their feet from sliding out from under them. And so that frictional force 
is actually in the same direction as motion, that would be doing positive work on the person box system. That frictional force between the floor and the person's feet, that does positive work on the system. Then we have the frictional force between the box and the floor, and that's trying to resist that sliding of the two surfaces past each other, so that's acting opposite the direction of motion, and again, doing negative work on the system. Now, I should mention that the uh, uh, other thing that's tricky on this situation is that the person has energy hidden, and energy can hide pretty effectively from us. Energy doesn't have to be obvious like a big box moving versus a big box not moving. Sometimes it's something as simple as atoms that are shaking a little bit versus atoms that are shaking a whole bunch. We can't see the shaking to begin with, so we can't really tell how much they're shaking. Other times it's hidden well in the form of what your chemistry teacher would probably call chemical energy. Chemical potential energy, which is a special case of electric potential energy that we would talk about in physics, uh, physics 2 in particular. Uh, so when we eat food, we are ingesting energy that is stored in the form of these, these chemical bonds between atoms, which is sort of an over, oversimplification, but it works with the analogy. As, uh, as we are pushing that box, our bodies are using that energy to do things like contract muscles to cause motion. Uh, and so that energy that, uh, that we're using is actually not leaving our system it's just changing forms, but it could really make it look like energy is coming out of nowhere. So the living things that, uh, that are part of our system, they really complicate things. And for that reason, we often leave the living things to the, uh, the biology people, and we let them handle those problems. We do a lot of blocks running into other blocks for situations like this, but it's good to include those things. It's still physics, it's still energy, still uh, you know, something that we ought to think about from time to time. We'll do a lot of calculations with work and energy, and energy in its different forms, and I'll have other videos about those. Uh, but really at the heart of this whole thing is the understanding that work is one way to transfer energy from one system to another system, or uh, if we just look at the one system, either into our system or out of our system. Uh, energy isn't ever created or destroyed, at least as long as we consider matter, mass, a kind of energy. Uh, but uh, it is transferred from place to place, sometimes from forms that are easier to observe to less easy to observe forms, or vice versa. So this, this law of conservation of energy is really broad. The idea that energy is never created or destroyed, that's universal in scale. We sometimes just have a hard time seeing where that energy is coming from or where that energy is going, and those, those are uh, opportunities for us to, like I said, use our detective skills. That's at the heart of this whole thing, though, that work is a way to transfer energy from system to system, and the amount of work being done is the same as the amount of energy being changed from one form to another or from one, one system to another uh, by applying forces. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned something from this video, I'd encourage you to like or share this video with uh, somebody you think could learn from this. And if you think you'd learn something from future videos, by all means, hit that subscribe button. I put them out as often as I can. Thanks again. Take care.